of our spiritual master. The only way we shall attain to your devotional service, a bow down to the Lord of Jesus, your own brother. By his grace, Where's my uh, Madunga player? Okay. And uh, we'll need the, the board for uh, Sri Nam Kirtan. You want to take the board out? Sri Nam Kirtan? Yes, so Mati Nandana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is a favorite song of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. When he was departing the world, he had this song sung. So it's a and it's a beautiful song. It's a it's a bhajan by glorifying the names of Krishna. Each of these names denote a particular quality and characteristic of Lord Sri Krishna. Yaso Mati Nandana Braja Badanagara Gokula Ranjana Kahana Yaso Mati Nandana Braja Mm-hmm. 
ಘೋಪಿ ಪರನಂದನೋ ಮನೋಹಿ ಘೋಪಿ ಪರನಂದನೋ ಮನೋಹ ಜನ ಫಾಳನ್ನ ಸುರಖುಹನ ಸಂಹಂದ ಘೋರನ್ನ ರಕ್ಕು ಹಂದ ಘೋರನ್ನ ರಕ್ಕು ಗೋವಿಂದ ಮಾರವ ನವನಿತ ಥಾಸ್ಕರ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಮಾರವ ನವನಿತ ಥಾಸ್ಕರ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಸುಂದರ ನಂದ ಕುಹೇ ಸಿಂಧಾರನಂದ ಗುಹಾಮುನ ತತ್ಜರ ಗೋಪಿ ಪ್ರಸನ್ನಾಮುನ ತತ್ಜರ ಗೋಪಿ ಪ್ರಸನ್ನ ಸಿಕ್ಕ ಕೃಪ ಮೋಹಸಾರ ಸಿಕ್ಕ ಕೃಪ ಮೋಹಾರು ಬಾಲವ ಬೃಂದವನ ಬಾಲವ ಬೃಂದವ ಶ್ರೀಯಾರುಪಾಲ ಸೋಮತಿ ನಂದನ ಭಜ ಬಾರಗರ ಕುಲ ಹೇ ಹಾಮಲಾರಿನ ಹಮಿಯ ವಿಲಾಸ ಗಜಜನ ಪಾಲನ ಸುರಕುಹನ ಸನ್ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಮಾರವ ನವನಿತ ಧಾಸ್ಕರ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಮಾರವ ನವನಿತ ಧಾಸ್ಕರ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಮಾರವ ನವ 
Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. Bolo, Ram Hare Ram. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Rama, Hare Hare. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. Krishna Krishna, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram. Govinda Madhava, Navanita Paskara, Govinda. Jamuna Tata Chara Gopi Vasanohara Hey! 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 Krishna! Sri Radha Vallava Vindavana Nathya Vata Sri Radha Vallava Vindavana Nathya Vata Hari 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 Hey, Jaya Kishore Kishore, Kishore Kishore Jaya, Kishore Kishore Jaya, Kishore Kishore Jaya, Kishore 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 Jaya, he took his heart. Prabhu Prabhupada, Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada. 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 When Krishna was a little boy, his mother would call, Kanai, hey Kanai. Kana, 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 come, take lunch, take lunch. No, mother, I'm playing, no time for lunch. <laughs> Krishna always wanted to play. He never, he always forgot to eat. So what happened was, in order to get Krishna to eat, they had, uh, Purnamasi, who was the, uh, she's the CEO of Vrindavan, she arranges all of Krishna's leelas, she would send a demon and then a demon would come and then they kill Krishna would kill the demon and then Krishna would get hungry right after that. So that's the only way you can get him to eat. Otherwise he just wanted to play all the time. Life is about playing, it's not about working. It's, it's this this idea of working, this is like for people who have nothing, no intelligence. <laughs> Life is about playing. You play now with Krishna, then you can play with Krishna and in the spiritual world. What's this going to work? That's what donkeys do, right? <laughs> donkeys work. <laughs> I work for some piece of paper and I, I feel good because I get a piece of paper that says, you got this much paper. 
put it in your bank and we keep it. <laughs> this is donkey philosophy. <laughs> Prabhupada talks about the donkey and the donkey. He just like, you know, walking along. And um, the washerman wants to uh, get a load, move from one place to another, so he puts it on the donkey's back and he puts a carrot in front of the donkey. And the donkey's thinking, oh, just one more step, I'll get that carrot. <laughs> he keeps going and going until he carries the load where the, the washerman wants, then he unloads it and he eats the carrot, doesn't give it to the donkey. Donkey's so stupid because he doesn't realize that there's grass everywhere. All he has to do is stop and eat the grass. But he's so stupid he thinks I have to work to get the grass. <clears throat> so this is working in the material world. If you just serve Krishna, you don't have to work. <laughs> if we just give our life to Krishna and serve Krishna, then Krishna takes care of you. There's that story of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, hey, Srivas, you know, you got a big family and you don't work. How do you live? How do you eat? Srivas said it went like this. He went. That was his answer. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, what does, what does that mean? And Srivas responded, oh, one day Krishna doesn't feed me. Two days he doesn't feed me and my family. And three days if he neglects us, I jump in the river Ganga and I drown myself. When Lord Chaitanya heard that, he, he shook the universe with his roar. He roared so loudly just out of pleasure. He said, Srivas, even if Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, has to go with a begging bowl from door to door to live, there will always be food in your home. What was he saying? You have full faith in Krishna. Therefore, Krishna will take care of you. So I tell that, and then I say to everyone, well, you sure? No, don't quit your job unless you have that faith. But if you have the faith, it works. <laughs> but if you don't have that faith, get it. Because <laughs> ultim ultimately, we didn't come into the world, as promises, we come to, into this world just to pass stool and urine. That's all we do here. <laughs> and then we die. <laughs> and so, there's a few other things in between, but that's just on the same level as stool and urine, so it's not much different anyway. This is this material world is just a big, it's just a, it's it's just a charade. It just it's just arranged so you can just be a fool, and then you die. <laughs> That's all. And Krishna says, "Come back to me." No, Prabhupada tells the story of Indra. Indra committed some offense, so he had to leave his post in the heavenly planets, and he came to the material world, and he had to take birth as a pig. And so he's now a pig, and he's got a, you know, a piggy wife and some pig, piglets. And so and he's got his nice mud, first-class stool. And so he's living really, you know, high on the hog, as they say. So he's living like that, and and then there's trouble in the heavenly planets. And so Brahma was consulted. Nobody can solve this but Indra. Okay, let's get Indra back. But he's in the material world as a pig. Well, let's see if we can get him out. And so Brahman comes to uh, Indra and says, you know, Mr. Pig Indra, <laughs> you know, we need you in the heavenly planets. There's a lot of problems there. Nobody can solve it. He said, how can I go? I got my piggy wife, oi, 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 and I got my kids, oi, 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 <laughs> And I got my nice mud, best mud, and stool, phew, the best stuff. You know. I'm not going. <laughs> so <laughs> Brahma thinks, well, we got to do something to get him back there. So they decide to decrease his family. <laughs> 
So his family's being taken away from him, and then, Indra, are you ready yet? All right. <laughs> so he finally surrenders. So this is material life. We get attached to so many things in this world. And anyway, the idea is to get attached to Krishna. And that's not hard because Krishna is easy to get attached to. In this world, you really have to work hard to get attached to something. You have to actually make believe it's not what it is. Because it's not really as good as you think it is. You just have to create this idea. It's nice. But it really isn't. <laughs> Otherwise, you can't get attached. <laughs> it's like on married day. You know, you get married and then all of a sudden, the first day you wake up and you see your wife, you say, who are you? I'm your wife. Really? Oh, my God. What happened? <laughs> Sorry about that one. <laughs> It's a whole different thing. <laughs> what happened to you? Well, you know, this is part of the program. <laughs> it's planned like that. <laughs> Married life, okay. <laughs> yeah, so we can get married to Krishna. Krishna's Krishna Mata, Krishna Pita, Krishna Dana Pran. It's described that in the material world, whatever you gain, you lose. And in the spiritual world, whatever you gain stays with you eternally. You never lose any of it. So why work hard for something you're going to lose? <laughs> work for Krishna. That way you don't have nothing to lose. You only have something to gain. Indra couldn't get it. <laughs> Okay, so Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Kato, chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Is that on the board? Yeah? Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This is 10th uh, Canto, 5th chapter, verses 1 and 2, the meeting of Nanda Maharaj and Vasudev. So now we're changing the whole um, theme of the Bhagavatam. Sri Sukha Uvacha. Nandas Twamaja Utpane Jatyadlado Mahamanaha Ahuya Vipraveda Gyan Snatta Suchir Alankritaha Sri Sukhu Uvacha Nandas Tvamaja Utpane Jatalado Mahamanaha Ahuya Vipraveda Gyan Snata Suchir Alankritaha Sri Sukhu Uvacha Nandas Tvalmaja Utpane Jatalado Mahamanaha Ahuya Vipraveda Gyan Snata Suchir Alankritaha
ladies. Mm -hmm. Sri Sukha Uvacha, Sri Sukha Dev Goswami said, Nanda, Nanda Maharaj, to, indeed, Atmajay, his son, Upane, having been born, Jata, overwhelmed, Alada, in great jubilation, Maha Manaha, who was great in minded, Ahuya, invited, Vipran, the Brahmanas, Veda Gyan, who were fully conversant in Vedic knowledge, Snata, taking a full bath, Suchi, purifying himself, Alankrita, being dressed very nicely with ornaments and fresh garments. Vajayatva, after causing to be recited, Swasti Ayanam, Vedic mantras by the Brahmanas, Jatta Karma, the festival for the birth of the child. Atmajasya of his own son, Vai, indeed, Karyan Asa, caused to be performed Vidivat according to Vedic regulations, Pratir Deva Archanam. The worship of the forefathers and the demigods. Tata, as well as. Okay, we're going to hear about the birth ceremony of, of Krishna. Sri uh, Sukadev Goswami said, Nanda Maharaj was naturally very magnanimous, and when Lord Sri Krishna appeared at his son, he was overwhelmed by jubilation. Therefore, after bathing and purifying himself and dressing himself properly, he invited brahmanas who knew how to recite Vedic mantras. After having these qualified brahmanas recite auspicious Vedic hymns, he arranged to have the Vedic birth ceremony celebrated for his newborn child, according to the rules and regulations, for he also arranged for worship of the demigods and forefathers. <coughs> Shila Prabhupada's purport. And there's a lot of commentary on this purport, so please listen up. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has discussed the significance of the word Nandas too. The word too, he says, is not used to fulfill the sentence because without two, the sentence is complete. 
Barefoot, the word too, is used for a different purpose. Although Krishna appeared as the son of Devaki, Devaki and Vasudev did not enjoy the Jatakarma, the festival of the birth ceremony. Instead, this ceremony was enjoyed by Nanda Maharaj, as stated here. Nandastu Atmaja Upane Jataladu Mahamanaha. When Nanda Maharaj met Vasudev, Vasudev could not disclose, Your son Krishna is actually my son. You are his father in a different way, spiritually. Because of fear of Kamsa, Vasudev could not observe the festival Krishna's birth. Nanda Maharaj, however, took it for full advantage of this opportunity. The Jatakarma ceremony can take place when the umbilical cord connecting the child to the placenta is cut. However, since Krishna was brought by Vasudev to the house of Nanda Maharaj, where was the chance for this to happen? In this regard, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur desires to prove with evidence from many Shastras that Krishna actually took birth as the son of Yasoda before the birth of Yogamaya, who is described, who therefore described, is described as Lord Krishna's younger sister. Even though there were many doubts about cutting the, um, the umbilical cord, and even though it was possible that this was not done when the Supreme Personality of Godhead appears, such events are regarded as factual. Krishna appeared as Varaha from the nostril of Brahma, and therefore Brahma is described as the father of Varahadev. Also significant are the words Kardiyam Asadvidibhat. Being overwhelmed with jubilation over the birth of his son, Nanda Maharaj did not see whether the cord was cut or not. Thus he performed the ceremony very gorgeously. According to the opinion of some authorities, Krishna was actually born as the son of Yasoda. In any case, without regard for material understandings, we can accept that Nanda Maharaj's celebration for the ceremony of Krishna's birth was proper. This ceremony is therefore well known everywhere as Nandotsava. Om Ajnan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Sunyavari, Pastyatyade Satarine, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadakar, Sri Vasadi Gaudamaktavin, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Let's see. Janma karma chime divyam evam yoga ti tattvataha tattva deha purna janma naiti man eti sorjuna. When Prabhupada was asked by Brahmananda, Brahmananda, one of the first disciples, Prabhupada, what is the most important verse in the Bhagavad Gita? And Prabhupada recited this verse Janma karma chime divyam. Because it really is the goal of the Bhagavad Gita. And what is that goal? It says that one who knows, Krishna speaking, Krishna says, one who knows the, one who understands the mystery of my birth and appearance in this world and my activities does not, upon leaving this body, again take birth in the material world, but attains to my abode, O son of Kunti, speaking to Arjun. So to know, and that means to understand fully, that Krishna's birth is divyam, or transcendental. Although there are many elements of Krishna's appearance that look quite ordinary, 
here we see something that kind of gives the divyam principle some emphasis, and that is the cutting of the umbilical cord, which is part of the, the ceremony which separates the mother from the child upon the birth. This is done all everywhere. But there was no ceremony done <laughs> for Krishna. Vasudev could not do that ceremony because he was in jail and not wanting to call attention to Kamsa about the birth of his son, who was Krishna. He, he pushed back or he avoided all the different ceremonies for the, the appearance of the child. But Nanda Maharaj wasn't. Of course, we know the story. Uh, Vasudev, uh, by the arrangement of Yoga Maya, took Krishna out of the jail cell and brought him to Vrindavan. Now, Mother Yasoda had already had a child, but because of her being unconscious or asleep at childbirth, she didn't really know what the baby was. And so she was thinking it was a girl, but it was actually both a boy and a girl. She had twins, but she only thought she had one. So Krishna appeared simultaneously. This is mentioned later on in this 10th uh, canto. To, in two places, he appeared as the son of Vasudeva, as Vaikuntha Krishna, and he appeared as by Vrindavan Krishna as the son of Yasoda. So Krishna was already born as the son of Yasoda and Nanda Maharaj. But when Vasudeva came to take the child, we read how he brought the child and exchanged it for the girl and took the girl back to the jail cell, which was Yoga Maya. We don't, we under, we, we, we don't hear how there was another baby there, but no one could see it. Krishna appeared, but he was unmanifest. And when Vasudev put Vaikuntha Krishna down near Yasoda, she was still sleeping, the two Krishnas merged into one. And that's why it says that Vaikuntha Krishna and Vrindavan Krishna, when Krishna left, we saw that picture yesterday, how the gopis are trying to stop Krishna from leaving Vrindavan. But what, who left Vrindavan was Vaikuntha Krishna to kill demons, and Vrindavan Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. He stays there. But he remains unmanifested. He takes shelter in the hearts of his pure devotees. And they can experience him through the mood of separation. Although he apparently is not physically there, he's there in his unmanifested form as Vrindavan Krishna, in the mood of separation. So here it mentions how Krishna appeared as both the son of Nanda Maharaj. Vasudev is thinking, I'm not so fortunate. You have the opportunity to, he's my son. <laughs> Vasudev is thinking, he's my son. He was born as the son of my wife, Devaki, in the jail. But you are so fortunate. Because of Kamsa, I am not able to keep him, nor am I able to have any ceremony related to his birth. So they're together, so there's a meeting. And you'll see as the chapter goes on how they discuss, you know, how Nanda Maharaj was, was you know, Vasudev was telling Nanda Maharaj, now Nanda Maharaj, you know, it's nice you've come to see me and we're friends, they were cousin brothers, but you should get back to Vrindavan as fast as you can because there's always going to be trouble with this new child of yours. <laughs> and Kamsa was already sending some of his, you know, messengers there to try to kill Krishna, which is not possible. And so it's a nice exchange. This is one of the most sweetest chapters in this section here, the loving exchange between Nanda Maharaj and Vasudev. Vasudev's heart is somewhat feeling unhappy but at the same time happy. He's happy for Nanda, 
but he's unhappy for himself because he didn't get the chance to raise Krishna. Later on, when they all meet at Kurukshetra, you know, Krishna shows his affection for Vasudeva and Devaki. And it's really a pitiable situation in how they were overwhelmed with uh, feelings of separation. And after seeing Krishna after all these years, Krishna did his whatever he could to somehow or other not apologize, but say, you know, my dear father, <laughs> you took care of me so nicely. I am your son, but you never got the chance to be my father. <laughs> so it's quite sweet. It's actually really sweet. And this is Krishna. Krishna, he attaches himself to someone and then he leaves. <laughs> this is bhakti. Bhakti is like that. You can't catch Krishna. It's not possible. The whole process of devotional service is running after Krishna. <laughs> that is the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's Tripalambhavar. Sometimes you get him, but he stays for a few seconds and then he leaves again. <laughs> That's Krishna. Why does he do that? Just to increase your love for him. Like that. So the whole process of devotional service is hankering to somehow meet Krishna through the process of executing devotion to Krishna, through service, through chanting, through offering prayers, wanting to, wanting to come in contact with Krishna. But the, more, the mood in bhakti, in the mood taught by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is always the mood of longing for Krishna, praying for Krishna, striving to get Krishna. I mean, if we're not strong in that faith, we might give up. Oh, I can't get Krishna. But the whole, our whole life is chasing Krishna. And he comes once in a while and says, here I am. And you feel so happy and then he leaves again. <laughs> and then you feel unhappy again. <laughs> so this is the whole process of bhakti, like that. So never get discouraged. It's all about running after Krishna your whole life. <laughs> Try to get that. Because he likes, he likes to incre increase the bhakti of his devotees by having that devotee hanker for him more and more, pray for him, and feel that mood. Of, and, but, but love in separation is higher than love in meeting. Because the gopis, when Krishna's there and they're with Krishna, they can't feel the happiness of, of being with Krishna. Why? Because they're thinking he's going to leave soon. That's their feeling. Their hearts are happy because he's there, but there's another feeling that comes along with that happiness is that he's going to leave soon. So that overwhelms their happiness and they feel unhappy. <laughs> so, but for Vipralamba Bhav, the mood is that the longing, just like one of the gopis when Krishna played his flute, and called all the gopis to come down to Vamsivad to dance in the rasa dance. They were with their children, they were with their husbands, they were doing various chores. All of them left except one or two. I think one once mentioned she couldn't go because her husband wouldn't let her go. But she went to Krishna with her heart. And with her heart, she was feeling the presence of Krishna. And that separation was so strong, she left her body, hankering for the presence of Krishna like that. So, and Krishna reciprocated that. He's reciprocated that mood of separation. So it is explained by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Acharyas that the mood of separation is actually more intense in its loving relationship with Krishna than the mood of meeting because it's a longing. Just like even in this world you might see that. If there's a husband and a wife that are very close to each other, they become separated due to a certain situation and they're always thinking, when will they meet again? So that love that's there is not as much appreciated as much as it is when you're not with the person you love. Just like I go in and out of airports all the time. And a lot of times I see people, they're meeting their friends and their loved ones, right? 
And the initial contact when they meet is so enthusiastic. They, they embrace and they're laughing and they're feeling so happy. But after a few minutes, it's over. <laughs> and then they complain, oh no, well, I don't know what to do. <laughs> but anyway, the point is that this separation causes the, the heart to, to long for that meeting. And when that meeting comes, it becomes the, the, the ecstasy of happiness. But then when that meeting stays a little while, the mood <laughs> changes. And then one thinks, uh-oh, separation's going to come again. <laughs> and then what are we going to do? The only problem in the material world when we have these things is that if separation stays too long or beyond the person's patience or expectations, People tend to lose attachment for that personality. And then what happens, they try to find something else, some other person to fulfill that need like that. But not in the spiritual world. The gopis would rather die than be without, than be with, to do something else than to think of Krishna. They can't have anyone but Krishna. It has to be Krishna. Even if Krishna doesn't reciprocate their love, we have that verse in, uh, what is that last verse in Shikshasha? Aslishyapa pinaratam punastumam adarshanam marmahatam karo tuva yata tata va viradatu lampato mat pranam astu sa evana paraha. The Acharyas say that this verse is love in meeting. And the verse before, what is that verse? Yugayitam dimeshena chakshusha pravishayitam shunyayitam jagat sarvam govinda virahenami. This is the this is the mood of love in separation, longing that one moment without you seems like twelve years. It's just like you know how time works. Time works like that. When you're happy and you're doing things, what is, the, what is the pace of time? What is the pace of time? P pace, P-A-C-E, fast. When you're uh, unhappy, what is the pace of time? Slow. And when you're waiting, stops. <laughs> time stops <laughs> when you're waiting. <laughs> And time is a concept, a conception of the mind. It's not something you wear on your wrist. <laughs> it's not that watch. So the relativity nature of time is like that. So when one is longing for Krishna, time seems to be eternal like that. But there is a higher principle that even amalgamates all these concepts of time is that when you love, time is eternal and time is lost in the mood of love. And so there's no more slow, fast, or anything. It just becomes eternal. It, it seems to be eternal, although it's not. <laughs> because in love, everything is there. So loving Krishna is all about what Bhagavatam is, trying to get us attached to hearing about Krishna more and more, and getting attached to want to love Krishna and serve Krishna. And we hear, hear how it becomes difficult. Because it, it says love of God is like four very sweet ingredients. I think it's mentioned sugar cane and camphor and saffron and one more. And then there's one ingredient that's not sweet. It's called black pepper. That's the fifth ingredient. So love of God also burns <laughs> a little bit. It's got a chilly taste to it. <laughs> so it's kind of simultaneously sweet and also very, very hot. <clears throat> so no one should ever get discouraged in our devotional service. Krishna is always inviting us to become more and more attached to him in different ways. 
So he wants us to get attached to him more than we want to get attached to him. So he does so many things in his life. What are the things he does in our life? He takes away our material attachments so we can't enjoy them anymore. And sometimes when we're so attached to material things, he gives us some suffering just to help us become more and more detached from those things that are causing us suffering like that. So that's Krishna. Krishna's, people say, well, Krishna's, you know, he doesn't really care. He doesn't really do anything. You have to do everything. He's doing, actually, he's doing everything. We just have to reciprocate <coughs> with him. And it's easy. As the Bhagavad Gita says, patram pushram phalam toyam yomi bhakti panasyati. <clears throat> when we offer whatever we have in service to Krishna as an offering to Krishna with devotion <clears throat> Prabhupada said it's easy my lord I don't have anything but I have this little object that I want to offer you please accept it <clears throat> that's love not like I'm so rich I got so much money <clears throat> and Krishna you can have a hundred dollars, I keep the other million, but you can have some of it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, the mood is that Krishna doesn't really need anything that we have, but he appears to be needy. He puts himself in a needy position. Why? Just so we can offer something to Krishna like that. So that's why it seems like, you know, Prabhupada would say, Krishna, he's always saying, you know, surrender more, give more, do more, do this, you know, like he's asking more and more and more. Prabhupada said, he's greedy. <laughs> he's a greedy God. He just wants more and more and more. <clears throat> but it's not because of he wants it, because he knows this is what it takes for us to become more and more attached to him. To take away <clears throat> whatever we have that is keeping us from surrendering to him. And there's so many things. Take a little inventory. What, what in my life that is keeping me attached in this world that I can't surrender to Krishna more and more? Whatever it is, look at it and see if you actually need it. Or if you can somehow or other plan to get rid of it. Like that. So, but there is a better formula is that just hear about Krishna more and more. Because when we hear about Krishna more and more, we get attached to Krishna. Because Krishna is all attractive like that. So we're hearing about Krishna, and we're also hearing about Srila Prabhupada. Is there any difference? No. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's no difference to hear about Krishna and to hear about Prabhupada. Because Prabhupada's whole life is based on giving Krishna to everyone. So in one sense, Krishna and Prabhupada are not different in the principle of devotion to the Supreme Lord and therefore to hear about Prabhupada means to hear about Krishna. And actually it's even higher to hear about Prabhupada because Krishna likes to when you glorify and hear about Prabhupada more than when you glorify and hear about him. So there's an extra element of mercy that comes by attaching ourselves to the great souls such as Srila Prabhupada like that. <coughs> That's why Krishna says one who <clears throat> says he's my devotee is not my devotee, but one who's a devotee of my devotee is actually my devotee. To, to become a devotee of Prabhupada means to follow the instructions of Prabhupada. It's not just some sentiment where we just say, oh, Prabhupada, you're so wonderful, and then we leave it at that. It's all about learning his instructions, learning our relationship with those instructions, actually executing the instructions and becoming an intimate associate of Srila Prabhupada by helping him in his mission to spread Krishna consciousness. This is the actual connection with the spiritual master incomplete. As Prabhupada told us, <coughs> uh, if you want to love me, and show your love for me, you cooperate. And when he said it twice, and the second time he said it, is by keeping this mission together. He also said one other thing. He said, 
even if you can't expand it, don't destroy what I created. <laughs> In other words, somehow or other preserve what I have. But he wanted more than that. He was just making some concessional statement. He wanted us to expand this movement more and more. And the connection with the spiritual master comes with following what he came for. He came to spread Krishna consciousness, so when we assist him doing that, we actually live with Prabhupada completely and fully. As he said to us, do what I'm doing. But it's not that we can do what he's doing, but we can do the activities he's doing and not on the same scale. <coughs> So, to glorify Krishna, the best way is to glorify his pure devotee. But we want to do both, because Krishna is sweet, and he's also attractive. And if you want to please Prabhupada, love Krishna, and become attached to Krishna. And if you want to please Krishna, love Prabhupada. <laughs> so that is love. Just like they say, when you chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and if you think of Krishna when you say Hare, that's high. That's higher than thinking of Radharani. And when you think of Radharani when you say Krishna, that's higher than thinking of Krishna. Why? Because the love between them is so strong that when you glorify the other person, you please the other person more than when you glorify that person. So when you say Hare Krishna, you're actually saying Krishna Radharani. <laughs> You're thinking like that. If you could do that, I mean, it's not so easy. But in other words, love works in such a way that the, the beloved becomes the object of my happiness. So when you glorify those that I love, you're actually doing the best service for me. <laughs> like that. That's the principle. So that works also with the spiritual master, especially with Srila Prabhupada, who was very dear to Krishna. Prabhupada never wanted any glory for himself. He always wanted to glorify Krishna. And after Prabhupada left, and even during the time he was here, but mostly when he left, Krishna set out a real plan to glorify Prabhupada. <coughs> now we're finding more and more about the glories of Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> much more than we knew when he was here. Why? Because he was always busy glorifying Krishna. And he kept telling us that's what we should be doing also. <coughs> now that he's <coughs> disappeared, now Krishna is arranging through his devotees to glorify Prabhupada more and more. And he's becoming, actually Prabhupada's becoming more and more known throughout the world in different circles now. You know, do a little, little research, you'll find that he's, his, his books, and his words are being spread in many, many different areas now, like that, his teachings. So, and this, this is the whole process. Okay, so I didn't want to speak too long today. Any questions or comments? Yes, Suresh Prabhu. Yeah, this whole... Uh, what? Uh, you really uh, deepened <laughs> my understanding of Janma Karma to Medivyam because in the Krishna book, Prabhupada doesn't really go into the intricacies of that whole switch too much. It's 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 kind of remains a mystery even after you read that summary study. So Prabhupada does go deeper. I just want to see if I got this right. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. This is Prabhupada's purport desires to prove with evidence from many shastras that Krishna actually took birth as the son of Jashoda before the birth of Yogamaya, who was therefore described as the Lord's younger, younger sister. Okay, so I think you said at one point that, um, that Jashoda had twins? Uh, yeah, the girl and Krishna. Okay, so that's what you meant. Yeah. That Krishna came out first. He must have come out first because. Well, it, it, oh, no, no. Krishna came out last. No, it can't be because she was. No, no. She so came she, out. Yeah. So Krishna younger. came out first. <laughs> so technically, she's younger because she was behind him. Yeah, that's why she's referred to as younger sister. 
Okay, so I never even knew that. Is that? <laughs> it's in the Bible, Tom. Huh? It's in the it's in the tenth canto. It's in the ten. It's that's the way it works. Yeah, yeah, I could never sort through that birth. And when Vasudev put Krishna down, the Vaikuntha Krishna, the two Krishnas merged into one. That was back in the prison. No, it's back when he placed the baby next to Yasoda and took the girl, and then the two. Krishna's became one. Yeah, later when he came back to the prison, right? Or I oh, mean, he couldn't see that. No one could see it actually. Krishna was in the unmanifested form when he appeared. But he appeared. That's why oh. there's some controversy on where he actually appeared and who to whom he appeared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Prabhupada just leaves it kind of open there. Yeah, but it, it's. Let me think. It's in one of these upcoming chapters. It's also mentioned. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Janma karma to me divyam. So I've got a long way to go. But well, oh. it's not just theoretical. Yeah. You have to actually realize. Yeah. Right. It's, it's a not. realization. Yeah. Yeah. And here's another thing I, I found about. Um, Everything in the spiritual world has its reflection here. So you, you mentioned this about people. Um, so I looked up the old phrase, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah. So it says, a new study <laughs> finds truth in the age-old adage, absence makes the heart grow fonder, suggesting that individ individuals in long-distance relationships experience more intimacy with their significant others than those who are together daily. Yeah. Familiarity breeds indifference. <laughs> Familiarity breeds contempt. contempt. Yeah. <laughs> but indifference also. Yeah. So, but it's different. I mean, the, so the pure form of that is just like what you described. Even so when you're anticipating meeting Krishna, that's a higher ecstasy. Yeah, but that longing is the, is the principle of bhakti. It develops through the different stages of bhakti. If we follow the process, then that naturally manifests as we execute our devotional service. So and then one becomes attached to Krishna, and then one longs for Krishna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's extraordinary, actually, how, you know, when Prabhupada was instructing George Harrison, and then later George wrote that song, my sweet Lord, that's yeah. the that's the mood he's expressing. It's really that was uh, such a powerful expression of his bhakti. Yeah, mm -hmm. he really got it, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when you're with Krishna, like you said, then it's it's overwhelmed by the the anxiety of not being with him soon because <laughs> he's going to leave. Yeah, that's well, the gopis are feeling like that, but that's an element of love also. Yeah. And like that. Um, again, another example on the material platform is just like if you know someone and you're a friend and maybe even a loved one, and then they die. Hmm. Sometimes you lament that you didn't really appreciate that person when they were here. It comes after the fact. Or you didn't take advantage of their association enough. Yeah. We also experience that in, when one of our devotees leave. Yeah. We feel like that. So that's that's after the fact. Mm. So yeah. So this is the separation always brings the heart closer to the person. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Akilesh? Yes. Okay. Um, so after Krishna left Vrindavan, so did those two Krishnas defuse? Because um, during Mahabharata, Krishna meets uh, Radharani and the other gopis again, and they say that you're not the same person anymore. <laughs> Which, no, the question is when Krishna returns to Vrindavan after being away? Yeah. And then, well, Krishna came back three times, different times. Um, well, yeah, but they, their love doesn't change. 
They're saying, you know, you now you're a little less villagey, you're more worldly. <laughs> You've been hanging around with those girls from Matura. <laughs> City girls. <laughs> he lost his innocence. <laughs> Yeah, it's like that. So you know, they part of the loving relationship between Krishna and the gopis is they criticize each other. If you really want to keep marriage together, you need to do that. Not in a, not in a mean spirited way, but in a joking way. You keep the marriage together. You just joke about each other's faults, and it's fun. Because if you do it seriously, it might cause you to break up. But if you do it in a joking way, then you can somehow or other reflect on the relationship that it's actually not so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's in the Bhagavatam, too. It says that the happiness in married life is to exchange joking words between husband and wife. And that's mentioned in the story with Rukmini and Krishna. So if you're actually looking for material ha happiness in married life, you got to joke with your wife. <laughs> but not with another lady, just with your wife. <laughs> yeah, it's, it actually, it, I'm not just joking, I'm saying this is an actual reality. It keeps things moving in a nice direction. <laughs> Yeah. This was confirmed to me yesterday after I taught the afternoon session and then Madhaji called me into her office and Prabhuji was there and after we after she expressed what she wanted to express then I started asking her about their marriage and she said this is what we do we joke we we joke but but we it's kind of like a mock fight yeah that's the that's the best part of marriage <laughs> And she credited that with being together for, I think, 29 years or 29 something? 29 years, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a mock fight, but it's, it's got some humor in there. Yeah, it keeps it interesting. Yeah, <laughs> keeps things moving. <laughs> yeah, try it. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Krishna does it all the time. <laughs> the, gopis, the gopis say, Krishna, you're just a fool because you hang with the buffoon cowherd boys. And you always talk nonsense. <laughs> she, yeah, and Radharani says, and Lalita said that to Krishna. You're a buffoon because you're always associating with those cowherd boys and you guys always talk nonsense. That's all you do. Because <laughs> they... Well, Krishna's with the cowherd boys, they just, they do all kinds of nonsense. It's like, some of it doesn't even make sense. <laughs> but they have fun. <laughs> yeah, no sense. <laughs> yeah. Yes, if you try it in the material world, it has a little bit of element of upliftment, but it doesn't last. <laughs> That's why you have to do it in the spiritual world because that's where it, it has it has ras, it has substance. <laughs> because it's Krishna's there. <laughs> yeah, so that point Akiya you made, you know, the gopis sometimes they they criticize Krishna. Like that. But that's part of the loving relationship, that's all. <laughs> There's not a bit of mean spirit in that criticism. And it's always done just to enhance the loving moods. That's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, you were speaking about uh, the gopis' loyalty to Krishna. And uh, sometimes we are um, like even encouraged that, you know, when our needs are not met, um, then to try and find that at some some place else, especially when it is not working. But um, h how do we like um, like the keep our loyalty? Like materially. I mean, how you make how to have a happy marriage here? Uh, it's not possible. <laughs> I'm I'm talking more about. 
kind of work on it and try to get it as best as you can. But <laughs> that's all you can do. <laughs> Don't look for perfection in this world. <laughs> it's, not, it's just not there. <laughs> you just have to do your best. The only way you can somehow last and marry life in this world is become Krishna conscious. <laughs> that's the only solution. Yeah. Maharaj, even towards, uh, like I was thinking more towards uh, Prabhupada and towards ISKCON, mm. because I remember one of the instances that Suresh Prabhu, Sureshwara Prabhu was sharing that one Mataji did a lot of research um, about Prabhupada, but she didn't feel that she was, um, her work was um, accepted and appreciated and she uh, turned away. So, like, like that. Well, that's, we might say that's unfortunate, that it wasn't accepted and appreciated. But we might say from one, maybe there was some lack on that side that they didn't really take time to appreciate. But from her point of view, she, would, she might have been looking for appreciation. Actually, if you're looking for appreciation and you don't get it, that's what causes you to become less enthusiastic or even go away. But when you're not looking for appreciation and you don't get it, there's no loss. <laughs> That's why not then what is that verse? Trinata peace and each na Dayori Basi. Amani na Mamanadena. So Lord Chaitanya teaches us we shouldn't be looking to be appreciated. We should be looking to appreciate. To give respects to others and not looking for respect for ourselves. Mm -hmm. When everyone is doing that, then that's heaven. Everyone should appreciate each other, but no one should be looking for appreciation for themselves. That's Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. That's Krishna consciousness. Sachi Nandana Maharaj gives tells a little story, you know, the difference between heaven and hell. It's a nice story. One man, he goes to, and he's talking to St. Peter, and he wants to know what's the difference between heaven and hell. St. Peter says, I'll take you to hell first. And so he takes him to hell, and it's lunchtime, and so everyone sits around a round table, and all the food's in the middle. And everyone is sitting a distance from the food and they got a long fork. And so they have, and when the bell rings, it's time for everyone to begin eating. So when they begin eating, they take their long fork and try to get the food in the middle of the table. When they try to do it, it just falls and they just keep hitting each other's forks. And then no one can eat and everybody's getting upset. So then he says, all right, now teach me what is heaven. So he goes to heaven. Same situation, there's food in the middle of the table, everybody's got long forks, and everyone's sitting around the table. And then when the bell rings, everyone takes the fork and feeds the person across the way. And that way everybody eats. <laughs> so that's the difference between spiritual consciousness and material consciousness. <laughs> it's a nice little story. Hare Krishna Dasi. The reason Hare Krishna Dasi took some distance from Ms. Khan is not so much that she wanted appreciation, she wanted action. Yeah. And she could see that she could do more good, perhaps in another organization, in terms of getting ox power and cow protection going than in ISKCON at she, that time. She did it through her son. She did it through her son with this Working Villages International. It's, it's actually acclaimed, yeah. It's in the Congo, right? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's in Tanganyika. I met him. You went there? I met him. Okay. He, he was telling me about the project. Yeah, yeah. that's great. So that's, that was really the essence of it, that she just felt, you know, that this play, this, these people, they're just not serious, they're not ready. And she's serious. 
Yeah, so she so she passed that spirit on to her son who did yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, we don't fault her for sometimes you feel like that and you, you want to get things moving so you have to do it yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Another question? Anyone else? Yes. Uh, Maharaj, um, um, this, I feel this science about Krishna's birth and Krishna's activities can be understood only in the association of devotees because uh, some people can claim that they have read the Bhagavad Gita and they have understood. But I, I was just visiting a gentleman when I was in India and he was saying, look, everybody has to suffer. Who, can, who can, does not go through suffering? Like even Krishna was born in a prison, he had to suffer. So, uh, you know, and some people speak like this, when um, our karma has to be taken away, Krishna has to suffer for our karma when he takes away our karma. So like there are so many uh, misconceptions um, about, Krishna. about Krishna, his activities and how he acts um, outside the circle mm -hmm. of devotees. Well, suffering is part of the material energy. Suffering is not, there's no suffering on the spiritual platform, even for devotees. So how can you say Krishna suffers? That means he's under the influence of the material energy, which he's not. He says, I'm divya. He's transcendental. He's not part of this material world. Even when he comes to the material world, he is not touched by the material energy. Well, there's, there's verses that confirm that. Which one? Krishna says. Uh, that he, that, what is it? Avajanti mam muha manushim tananasvatam param bhava magyana to mamma bhuta maheshvara. Fools deride me when I take birth in this material world. They do not know my transcendental nature, my supreme nature and being transcendental to everything. And then the other one, Naham Prakasya Sarvasya Yoga Maya Samadvitaha Muro Yoga Vijananti What's the last line? Loko Avijana, yeah. I'm covered by my curtain of Maya and therefore one cannot understand my activities. So Therefore, they're looking through the material energy and, ex and putting Krishna within that same context. He's not. God is not part of this material energy. He controls it, but he's not affected by it. <laughs> if he was affected by it, what's the question of being God? That, mo that means Maya would be superior to Krishna, <laughs> which is not. <laughs> he says, Mama Maya. It's my Maya. <laughs> so they just, they're ignorant. They don't know the nature of God. They read the Bhagavad Gita and they put Krishna in a position of being a little bit better than them. That's all. <laughs> but he's not. He's, he's transcendental to everything. Otherwise, how can he be God <laughs> if he's part of this material energy? Now, therefore, Jiva Goswami says, to understand Krishna means achintya, that it's inconceivable. How do you understand Krishna? Only by devotional service. What is that verse? Bhaktiya mam avijananti yavanyas tattvi tattvataha tato yo tato visite tarantaram. Only by devotional service can I be understood as I am. There's no other way to understand Krishna. He reveals himself through devotional service when the devotee is qualified to receive that knowledge. So when people try to speculate and guess, they're always wrong. The two ants are, t are talking together and says, you know, there's something up there above us. And the other ant says, no, nah, you're just dreaming, that's all. There's nobody up there. <laughs> There's a whole, whole world above the ant world, right? 
And there's a whole world above our world called the demigod world. <laughs> Prabhupada said the demigods are so powerful that if they want, they can crush you just like you crush an insect. <laughs> it's not a problem for the demigods. They can just kill you with no problem. Just like you push out, and you, we don't do that, of course, but if you step on an insect, and the insect's finished. Demigods can do that with us. We're so small. And so we're going to understand something beyond the demigods with our intelligence, right? That's why we're called jiva. Jiva means tiny. Jiva means overwhelmed by material nature. Two definitions of jiva. Tendency to come under the material energy, tendency to be small. Jiva also means forgetful. <laughs> Another, we forget. So with all those disqualifications, we're going to understand God. <laughs> God suffers. Uh -huh. Prabhupada says the only element of suffering God feels, he feels the suffering of love, where sometimes he feels unhappy because of our suffering. But that's all. That's compassion. That's not, he's not suffering. He's just feeling, because he loves us, I mean, when he sees that we're suffering and we refuse to take his mercy, there's a kind of element of unhappiness that can be applied to Krishna. But it's not something like it forces him to, you know, become different. So we have, to, we have to hear from Prabhupada and from the scriptures, what is the nature of God? You can't speculate. God is like this, God is like that, God is like this. So you have to tell them, you know, your ant-like intelligence <laughs> is not able to reach to the transcendent. Yeah, what's Bhakti Siddhanta's? The materialistic demeanor cannot reach to the transcendental autocrat who is always inviting the conditioned souls. It goes on like that. <laughs> We're small, and but we can serve Krishna and develop our relationship with Krishna, and Krishna reveals himself through that service, through that attitude. That's the process of know, knowing Krishna through bhakti. <coughs> okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Oh yeah, yes, and most important is tonight, today at 11 o'clock is lesson number nine, Founder Acharya. <coughs> Personally, this is one of the most interesting lessons I found out of all of them. It gives us a clear understanding of Prabhupada by explaining what we might think Prabhupada is, but he's not. <laughs> so it's quite interesting, and it's also, if you like to laugh, it's a little humorous. So, <laughs> so you'll find this interest. This is a very interesting presentation. Eleven a.m. Here, okay. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Kita.